We are incredibly lucky that the Earth is located next to a stable star and has the necessary conditions for people to live comfortably. But is it so bad to live on other planets? What if life exists not only on Earth? Could we find even better places to live? For example, possible indicators of extraterrestrial life have recently been discovered on Enceladus, Saturn's moon. In its geysers, scientists have found methane, which most likely confirms the presence of life on Enceladus, or perhaps it's just geo- or thermochemical processes. There's so much methane in the geysers of Enceladus that such an amount cannot be explained by a non-biological origin. Scientists conducted a series of studies during which they couldn't explain why there's so much methane in the geysers of Saturn's satellite. Moreover, its reserves are constantly replenished and evaporate into space. However, it all makes sense if we assume the presence of microbes there, the likes of which can also be found in hydrothermal vents here on Earth. Scientists believe that Enceladus produces enough hydrogen, which is necessary for such microbes, and the temperature is kept at a comfortable level for them. So, does life exist on Enceladus? No one's yet ready to confirm this statement. They say that complex deep-sea missions are needed, and they're not foreseen for at least the next few decades. A similar story happened with Venus. Phosphine is found in the clouds of the planet, a gas that's produced only by either an industrial method or by microbes living in an oxygen-free environment. When scientists received the first hints of phosphine in the spectrum of Venus, they were shocked and couldn't believe their luck for a long time. How to explain the presence of this gas? Scientists suggest that phosphine could enter the atmosphere as a result of non-biological processes, but it turned out that all non-biological sources produce a maximum of one ten-thousandth of the amount of phosphine that was recorded by telescopes. Phosphine, or rather phosphorus hydride, is a poisonous gas that has no color and is quite rare in nature. As a rule, it's released during a chemical reaction in production from a lightning strike more as the result of volcanic activity. But on Venus, it was found in extremely large quantities. How the heck did it get there? Most likely as a result of the vital activity of bacteria that live in an oxygen-free environment. This version seems to astronomers the most likely. However, they don't exclude the possibility that they could have missed something and that perhaps there's some other explanation of where so much phosphine came from on Venus. At the same time, Nathan Eismont, a researcher at the Space Research Institute of the Russian Academy of Sciences, is convinced that there is the highest probability of finding life on Venus. To this end, the Venera D project has already been approved. But why do we pin such high hopes on Venus? According to Eismont, the Earth and Venus are very similar. They have similar masses and dimensions, but will the search for life succeed on Venus? Probably not. Indeed, even the atmosphere in which phosphine was discovered consists of extremely dry and acidic air, almost devoid of water. In addition, Venus is almost one and a half times closer to the Sun than our planet, and its surface would seem too hot for any life forms to exist on it. The average temperature there is about 460 degrees Celsius. Under such conditions, even lead melts. This means if astronauts go to Venus in the future, they'll first be dissolved in sulfuric acid and then poison themselves with phosphine. If some creatures really do live there, then we won't know about them anytime soon. However, scientists are sure that there were times when the climate on Venus was much milder and its surface was most likely covered with oceans in which life could have arisen. However, since then, a strong greenhouse effect has dried up the oceans and now only microorganisms could possibly continue to exist there. So what about other planets? Maybe somewhere out there, there are more suitable conditions for life. 
In 2002, British scientists discovered that Jupiter has a wetter atmosphere than Venus. Of course, the harsh conditions on the planet seemingly leave no chance for even the most unpretentious life forms to exist there. But the latest discoveries by scientists do indeed leave this question open. The fact is that sulfur dioxide was found in the clouds of Jupiter, the drops of which contain a fairly large amount of water. Assuming that it contains nutrients, then microbial life could exist in the clouds of Jupiter, and maybe not only microbial. At least, that is, on Jupiter's moon Europa. It's hypothesized that alien life may be hiding under a thick layer of ice on this small satellite. Data from telescopes and spacecraft give us reason to believe that Europa could be hiding a global ocean from us, one which our solar system is not allowing to freeze. Who could live there besides microbes? Monica Grady, rector of the University of Liverpool, believes that Europa is more developed for life than Mars. Thanks to the warm, under-ice ocean, living conditions on Jupiter's moon are more comfortable and could offer better opportunities for survival. In addition, organic matter rises from the bowels of the satellite, which could be used as food for living organisms. If this is true, future colonists may well encounter much higher forms of life than previously thought. There's an opinion that the minds of some inhabitants of Europa could correspond, for example, to the level of that of squids or octopuses. What if mermaids or aquamen live in the oceans of Europa, but we just don't know anything about it yet? Could they feed on the creatures existing there and perhaps live in underwater homes? There are no answers to these questions yet, but experts are inclined to believe that life forms similar to humans are unlikely to appear in the vicinity of Jupiter. This is unlikely due to the lack of light in the depths of Europa's ocean and the powerful pressure of the ice sheet. Now, let's move on to dwarf planet Ceres with its splashing sea waves. Scientists came to this opinion after studying emissions from the Akatur cryovolcano located on Ceres. Cryovolcanoes are a specific type of volcano found on planets and other celestial bodies, which are characterized by extremely low temperatures. Instead of hot lava, they spew a mixture of water, ammonia, and methane. According to scientists, cryovolcanoes indicate the presence of water inside the planet Ceres. Sodium carbonate deposits have also been found on the surface of the planet. Paul Schenk from the Lunar and Planetary Institute believes that the similarity of some processes on Mars, Earth, and Ceres may indicate favorable conditions for the emergence and evolution of life. In his opinion, on water-rich Mars and Earth, life must have arisen. After studying the cartography of this dwarf planet, Paul Schenk discovered similar deposits in the region of the Akatar Crater. Some of the most common elements in the universe are hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, silicon, and iron, and they're necessary for the existence of organic life. In particular, a human needs water to drink, air to breathe, and a planet with a surface on which to move. If all these components could one day come together on Earth and set off the processes necessary for the development of life, then why can't it also happen on one of the hundreds of billions of exoplanets that exist in our galaxy? According to the laws of statistics, life simply must have sprung forth on more planets than just the Earth. The only question is, will we find it? And if we find it, what actions will we take next? Over the past 30 years, astronomers have discovered more than 4,000 exoplanets, planets located outside the solar system. Most of them revolve around their stars. Many exoplanets contain the same elements as the planets of our solar system. There are only slight differences. Some of them are dominated by water and ice, while others are dominated by iron and carbon. However, we've yet to find a single planet identical or extremely similar to the Earth or other bodies of the solar system. However, there are so-called terrestrial planets. For example, TRAPPIST-1d, like the Earth, is the third planet from its star, which, in terms of the composition of its soil, may be similar to our planet. 
Also, this object is located in the habitable zone, the region where the amount of heat from the star is sufficient for the existence of liquid water on the surface. Now, let's take a look at TRAPPIST-1e, which is 60% the size of our Earth. It's noteworthy that a year on this planet lasts only 6.1 days. An interesting fact is that the density of this planet exceeds the density of the Earth by several times. It's all about it having a denser iron core, which may be the reason why the planet's atmosphere is more rarefied. And this means that the presence of oceans on the planet remains questionable. However, TRAPPIST-1e is the most similar to our Earth in terms of size and the amount of energy that circulates there, which comes from the local star. Could intelligent life exist there? So far, we don't have enough computing power to study these planets in more detail. However, Geneva Observatory astrophysicist Andre Mater believes that in the search for life in the universe, we're more likely to find bacteria than something like an intelligent civilization from Star Wars. It takes time for such a civilization to emerge, as well as stable, basic physical conditions. The Earth had such privileges, and not only that. For example, our moon gives us an optimal climate, and the gas giant Jupiter attracts almost all asteroids flying into the solar system. Without Jupiter, Earth would be much more likely to experience catastrophes like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. So, for now anyway, the facts only indicate that if there are extraterrestrial inhabitants somewhere, they're probably single-celled, at least in our solar system. Or maybe we and these other intelligent beings somehow just missed each other in time and in space. Take a look at the screenshots that are now on the screen. These are statistics from YouTube. What does this mean? Notice, now 57% of viewers of this channel are watching without a subscription. Therefore, in order not to miss Hubble videos, you just need to click on the red button, which looks like this. It's below this video. The law of the universe is simple. Remember that. After all, each of your subscriptions is very important to me. The more viewers, the more often they watch and like, the faster a new mega-interesting video will come out.